Hello and thank you for joining us. My name is Ben Sheen. I'm one of the managing editors here at Stratfor and I'm joined here today by science and technology analyst Rebecca Keller. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Ebola and the most recent uh, outbreak, not only in Africa, but now also in the United States. Rebecca, what is it in particular about Ebola that has so captured the public imagination? I mean, we've seen epidemics before, but what's specific to this virus? I think it's the severe, severity of the virus. It's unknown, it's, it's relatively rare up until now, and it's extremely deadly, so it's also extremely scary. And I think not knowing it, having a cure or knowing a cure does make it a lot, a lot scarier. Absolutely. And it's the, it's the deadly nature of the virus itself that's really captured people's imaginations. But in comparison to other viruses, it's really not that communicable, is it? No, correct. It's not that communicable. Um, transmission of Ebola requires direct contact with bodily fluids of an infected person that is showing symptoms. So it, it requires extremely close contact. It's not that easy to, to transmit at all. Um, which is one of the reasons it doesn't spread that quickly and, and can be contained through, through modern medicine and precautionary techniques, which is why it's not, there's not as great of a risk of an outbreak in a developed country where the kind of precautionary measures are readily available to, to the, the medical community. Yes, and as we saw in Africa initially, the virus spread relatively quickly, partially due to a lack of infrastructure and also a failure to really deal with the virus in its initial stages. How do you see containment being enforced in somewhere like a first world country with access to first world medicine? Containment in, 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 in developed nations or even in, as we saw in Nigeria and Senegal, requires tracking of contact cases, knowing who has had contact with the confirmed Ebola patients, monitoring those patients for the, the incubation period of the disease, and, and, and just keeping those uh, with suspected cases or, or possible con contact under quarantine and constant monitoring to make sure to catch the ca uh, any additional cases as early as possible. Nigeria, which was just declared uh, Ebola free after 42 days with no new cases, is, an, is a prime example where they were able to track and all of the contacts of their initial index case um, to start with. So. Just keeping track of, of who, who has been in contact with the patient and then limiting the contact with the patient and using proper precautionary measures is extremely important. It's also extremely important to remember and understand how the disease itself is transmitted and, and continue to use the proper precautionary procedures. And as we've seen recently with the, the first case in, in Dallas, actually tracking people who are infected is not as easy as it seems. And actually making sure that those people aren't allowed to come into contact with anyone else, that, that's difficult in its own right. It is difficult in its own right, but it's not impossible. And, and it all comes back to the, the difficulty of transmission. We did see two uh, healthcare workers infected from the initial index case in Dallas and healthcare workers and first responders are at the greatest risk for transmission, especially before the disease has been identified. Um, however, the, the CDC is working to track not only the contacts of the initial index case, um, but also of the two nurses affected. And, and a lot of those trackings are of what would be considered minimal risk patients. For instance, the airline where the second nurse traveled, those other passengers are actually at very minimal risk because the nurse wasn't showing active symptoms during the flight. She only had a low grade fever, which means that transmission would be highly unlikely in that case. The phrase that's used quite often is abundance of caution. It's just to make sure that any uh, possible, no matter how remotely, infection is kept track of. So yeah, it's a difficult procedure, but the developed world has the capability to do that kind of tracking. As well as the tracking aspect, there's also a, a treatment aspect. Now at the moment, no known cure for Ebola exists. Do you think we're likely to see any evolution of a, a cure in the next few years with increased funding and awareness? Quite possibly. We've seen acceleration of, of vaccine trials already from, from the initial outbreak, but it's really hard to determine the success rate of those. It's usually a, a, year, a years long process to develop um, new vaccines. What we really need to start seeing and what will contain this current outbreak in West Africa is, is treatment at the source. It's going to those countries, Liberia, Guinea, Sierra Leone, where the outbreak is still rampant, is still increasing um, the number of cases and 
increasing education and increasing facilities there and stopping the outbreak at its source. Because until that's done, we expect to see these additional isolated cases popping up in, in the developed world and in other countries. Until the, the source is, is contained, we will likely continue to see this kind of continued um, interest in the media because every case will re- reinvigorate the, the interest. Absolutely. And, and as you said quite critically there, that these cases, they're isolated, they're small in number, and they are very, very unlikely to spread further. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today, Rebecca. Thank you very much for joining me here. And I'd encourage you to keep reading Stratfor and look out for any further analysis and updates on Ebola.